Hi everyone. Welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a how-to on how I do bare metal foil. Now I don't use this stuff very much, but for my Mustang project I'm working on, this is the perfect solution for my door panels and I'll probably do it on the uh, dashboard too. But uh, what I got is I got a basic let me bring this down. I'm handheld in this camera right now, so you got to bear with me here. Um, basically, what I want to do is this panel right here is supposed to be aluminum with a chrome trim on it. And I could paint that real quick, fast, and in a hurry. It would have brush strokes in it and things like that. And yeah, you wouldn't notice it from outside the car, but I wanted to do a, a video on bare metal foil and an easy start to how to do it and I thought this would be the perfect thing. So this is what we got and what we're going to end up with is that. And it really, it's going to be harder to do in the video than it will be for you all to do it yourself and because it really is pretty simple. So let me move this out of the way and this out of the way. And you can see I've had this package for quite a while now. And the last time I used it was on a uh, uh, Chevy station wagon. <laughs> this is bare metal foil. You can see I've cut off strips and worked my way down. It, it'll go a long, long, long way. Because you don't need to cut off a whole ton of it to do it. And what it is basically is this stuff put on a piece of paper that you peel off. And I'll show you when we get into the video exactly what I'm talking about there. But this is what it is. Let me move that out of the way. And the basic tools you're going to need that you have to have. I mean, I can fudge through a lot of things. But what you need when you do bare metal foil is a brand spanking new knife blade. I'm using the uh, Exacto number 11s. I bought these on Amazon. Uh, it was a two-pack. They last a long time. But any time I do bare metal foil, I start off with a brand new tip. And if you don't, it'll drag and pull, and it'll end up wrinkling, like like it's shown here. I don't know. This was this way when I bought the thing, and I don't know. I should have probably taken it back, but I can work around all that stuff. But definitely have a brand new Exacto knife blade. Um, did I say you need to have a new Exacto blade? Because you really do. And then Q-tips. Have three or four Q-tips. Um, I use this one. You can see the uh, the end of it's all flattened out on both sides. And I use this to burnish the part down. Other than that, maybe a toothpick. But you got to watch with toothpicks because they can be sharp and they'll tear. But let's get going on this. It'll be a quick video because it's not that hard. Um... The camera is going to be on an angle a little bit, so my lunk head isn't in it and, or smacking it. Uh, I'll set up the camera and we'll get started. Okay, thanks for bearing with me here. I have my camera tilted just a little bit here to try to keep my lunk head from smacking into it while I do this because I'm going to be getting really down close on this part. And what, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to figure out, you know, I could do it here but I'm afraid this wrinkle is going to get in the way, so we're going to have to start sacrificing a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this this way, and I'm going to figure, okay, I need this to be about yay deep. And I'm going to, I'm going to waste some here just because it's easier for me. So I'm going to come down, and I'm going to cut off much more than I need. See, I'm trying to keep my blade angled here a little bit. And I cut through the aluminum, give it a little bend, and then I'm going to cut all the way through with my old knife. I want to save that tip for as much as I can. And there's no sense in using it on this long cut when I don't need it. See how that peeled right off the paper there? Get that out of the way in the trash can. Doo -doo -doo. Now we're done with that sheet for this. Let me get it out the way. 
and we're going to size this up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm going to I'm going to leave a little overhang for this side because you can see this strip is a little wrinkled here and I'm going to leave a little bit of overhang on this side. So we'll cut it right about here. Got my mark and just pull it through. Wow, that knife blade is a lot, a lot worse than I thought. <laughs> and you can see there's one piece there. So if I wanted to, I could use that for two pieces. But we'll go ahead and we'll use this piece here. And uh, we should be fine. Now, like I said, this paper kind of folds up on here. So I'm going to peel this up a little bit. And I'm taking now I got my new blade. And we're going to actually move the old blade clean out of the way off up so I don't accidentally grab it and I'm going to go for a corner here and I'm just going to work a corner up to where I can grab it with my tweezers that I didn't remind you to uh to use but everybody's got tweezers look at that I got a piece of woman on there everybody's got their good tweezers I like these nice pointy tweezers um I've had these forever they were probably a quarter inch thicker when I started, but holding them forever, wearing them out. But I'll take that, and I'm going to start working this off the paper. And this is old stuff. I had some of it just kind of disintegrate on me. Now that I got it started, I can go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to peel it away. Look, see, that ripped. And that was all my fault, but you know what? I made it big enough to where it'll work. So we'll move them out. And I'm going to kind of go sideways here on this, making sure I'm covering that bottom. But I don't want to go too far on that bottom. So let me get my other visor down, and I'm just going to lightly press this down. See, I don't want that up on there. I want that just like that. There we go. Now we got this little piece right here for the uh, latch, I think it is. And what I'm going to do before I even start pressing is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to start at the end of this tape. And I'm going to just cut down the length of it just to give it to where it can move. Because if I try to push that that way, it's going to wrinkle really, really bad. So now I'm going to take a brand spanking new Q-tip. And I'm going to start at one edge. And I'm going to go light. Just see, really, really light. How cool is that? See it forming down on there? And I'm going to work up to that piece that I cut. Just like that. Be gentle with it for the beginning, and it'll it'll do you good. Now I'm going to come down the other side, and I'm going to work into it that way. So I'm trying to tuck all that in. I got a wrinkle in there, but that'll be okay. It's hard to do this if you if you do it off camera. <laughs> it'll lay down a lot better than this. But I, I'll show you here, even with that, this is going to come out really good. Way better than you can do painting, I'll admit to it. I just, I can paint a lot faster, so I usually don't use this. And now, this is all I'm doing, is I'm just getting my hand right in the way. Ah, I'm sorry, let me go this way. This is all I'm doing, is I'm trying to push that foil into... The gap or the the little ridge here on this, and we're gonna work it in and work out the wrinkles and keep on flattening it. And now that I'm pretty tight on here, and you can see I'm wrinkling up a little bit, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna put it right on that edge, and I'm gonna run it down to the end. I'm going to come across the top, cut in, like that, 
And there are a lot of people that are so much better at this than I am. But I've just had so many people ask that I figured it was just, it was fair for me to, uh, to, you know, I show you everything else. It's only fair for me to show you this, too. And look at those wrinkles. I'm working them out. I told you they'd go away. You'll still have some, but it's okay. I mean, seriously, this is going to be so hidden in there that it'll look awesome. All right, so now I'm, I'm kind of burnished on. I see a little bit of rum bumps here. And look at that, just kind of back and forth with the flat side and polish it out. Get that, make sure it's all pushed into these corners and make sure the outside, the outside is the most important part right now because we got the inside laid in there. And now, this is so fun. We're gonna take these and I'm gonna turn my other visor. When I say my other visor, I have two lenses on my visor. This is a number, a number two and this is a number three. And together, I feel like Clark Kent. <laughs> I can see everything. Now, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. And I'm going to take my blade, and I'm going to come into it this way. This is so hard to do with it out, not pulled right into my chest. And see, I'm, I can't see the edge. So now, yeah. It's hard to do on film. I'm just trying to run this down that outer edge. And we'll even try to make that look better. But I, I could stop the camera, start this all over again. But I'm not going to because I want to see how it comes out. I can always refilm this if it's horrid. But I think we'll be able to save it. You don't need to go too far because you don't want to scratch into your your good paint job there. And come down. Follow that edge as tight as you can. Come into that where I cut it. Start where I cut it. Come in and off the edge. Now we got an edge here to do too. So what I want to do is I want to leave this. This edge right here will be hidden with the uh, firewall and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to walk it off the front. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to walk it down. Just like that. And now, if I didn't jerk this up really super bad, we should be able to take this and peel that away. Check that out. Let's see what happens when we get down to that part that I cut bad. Yeah, see it tore a little bit, but that's cool because we know we cut through. So I'm going to come around the other way, tilt it, and pull it towards it. Yeah, see it, it tore. So let's see if we can save that on film for everybody to see. Look at that. So if you wanted to be frugal, just by pushing it back together again, giving it a good rub, you're going to have just that little tiny, little tiny crack right there. <sighs> and now we'll take this with the blade turned on a, almost flat to it. We'll cut it. And I saw it separate. I'm coming in. And we're going to save this. If that was the top, I would probably pitch it and start over. But since it's the bottom, I'm not going to. Let me get underneath this one. I hope when I go back and look at this video that my head's not right in the middle of everything here. I'll grab it here next to the door. So I burnished it down really well. And now it's hard to get off. But once it starts, 
There it goes. Be patient with it, and it will reward you. Let's see here. I can start from down at this end. I really don't want to mess that paint job up. There it goes. There it goes. See it? A little piece right there? That's all we need to get a little bit of something we can grab a hold of and walk it out. <laughs> There's one nice edge. And this, since I cut up in there, I'm going to take this piece off. And I'm not too worried about scratching the paint off of this because this is going to get a Molotov pen to give it two different kinds of chrome. But I do got to get this piece off. Right here. There it goes. Ta da! There's that little piece. I'm going to toothpick, see if we can't push it just a little bit without, yeah, there we go, see how that worked, remember I said even a toothpick, bunched it up, peel it off, alright man, that is looking pretty darn good, I'm going to come back here where these little wrinkles are, and I'm going to work some of them out, I can feel that one. I'm not going to be able to get that one out of there. But that one's not going to really be seen when it's tilted that way. See? So we're cool. We are really, really top notch. Now I want to get around this edge again right here and make sure I'm down nice and tight all the way around there. Remember, I cut that back in here, so I'm trying to go away from it. Kind of like going with the grain. Push that down. Tuck that under. Again, I'm sorry if you can't see it, if my knuckles are in the way, but I'm trying hard not to make it that way. And I'm just fussing with it now, just trying to make it as best as I can. Let's come back across it this way and give it a nice polish. And there's a the door panel. Maybe five minutes. I can see I'm a little high on here, right here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I, I'm gonna come back in with the blade on an angle. And what it is, is I, I did a little swoop when I was cutting it. And we can make that go away too, just by coming in, good angle, nice tight. See how it's separated? Let's use the toothpick and see if we can't push that out. Like that. Grab a hold. Grab a hold. <laughs> I can see it moving. It doesn't want to pick up. And I'm going to peel back a little bit. It lifted just a smidge in a corner. Did you see that? Like I said, I am not an expert at this. But... If a butcher like me can get results like this in that amount of time trying to film it with a camera, <laughs> I think you guys can do a lot better job because it, it does help to get your face right down in there. But now there's two really sharp door panels. And it, say you wanted to do like this, uh, like this Bel Air in here. You know, you run that, that bare metal foil down from here to back. How about if I bring this up into the camera? <laughs> if you wanted to do this Bel Air, you'd run that bare metal foil from this door jam all the way back, up high and down low. You would work that the inside part in first. And what that'll do is that'll kind of pull this part up like that on both sides. And you burnish the inside, and then you kind of come over the top, and you roll this side out, 
and then you cut all that out and you peel that thing off and I'm telling you, you're going to feel like you could go and drink a case of beer because you're a champion. So there we go. Bare metal foil. Simple. I mean, this is very simple. When I do that dashboard, I'm going to need my face dead in it. That's why I didn't bring the dashboard out and do that uh, because I'm not that good with it. But I'll do the dashboard next and then I'll take a couple of pictures of it and show you that even a butcher like me can do this. And again, if I can do this, you can do this. Um, let me back out here for a second. Wow. And I'm going to show you. You're going to be seeing it in the car like that. You know what I mean? You're going to be looking down at it through the window, not straight at it. So like that little flaw and that little wrinkle, don't freak out over it. it it's not worth freaking out because you're not going to be able to see it anyhow. Um, on the outside on the outside body panels, yeah, you're going to be able to see it. But for these door panels, there we go, like that. These door panels, you're not going to see it. I keep holding them upside down. You know, they go like this. You're looking into it that way. Look at how nice that looks. So here, we'll whoa, come back in. Whoa, way in, big time like that. See how nice those panels look? You're not gonna, you're not gonna notice those little wrinkles and nobody else is either. They're gonna be like, holy crap, did that come out smooth? <laughs> so there you go. And you can see this one I did off camera where I was able to get my face down in there to the difference. So you'll be able to do a lot better job than I than I did on this one just because, you know, my face was dead in there. I was able to get down closer and more steady. You know, you can pull it in and, and be steady. So there you go. There's bare metal foil at its easiest. I am Mark. This is Grandpa Mark's Hobbies. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I helped somebody. If not, let me know in the, in the comments, and I'll try to do better. Have a great day.